Hi, my name's Amanda and I'm a pharmacist. Today we'll be looking at high alert or high risk medications. And if you find this video useful, please press the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share it with others who may find it helpful too. And if you would like to have lifetime ad-free access to my pharmacy learning videos and handouts of all my slides, please consider enrolling in my online course today. The link to my course is in the comments and the description. Thanks, I really appreciate it. So we'll begin by looking at what are high alert or high risk medications. High alert or high risk medications are drugs that have an increased risk of causing significant patient harm or injury when misused or used in error. High alert medications, or as an acronym, HAMS, are not necessarily more prone to medication errors, but if a mistake does occur, the effects can be life-threatening and permanent. High alert medications require extra precautions to reduce the risk of errors. So now we'll look at um, high alert medications versus NTI drugs. So NTI drugs, that stands for narrow therapeutic index drugs. These are medications in which a small difference in dose or blood concentration can lead to serious therapeutic failures and or adverse drug reactions that are life-threatening or result in significant disability or incapacity. So with an NTI drug, you have a small change in drug dose or blood concentration, and that leads to a very significant undesired effect. So many of the high alert medications have a narrow therapeutic index. So this is one reason why they can cause significant harm or injury if used in error. It only takes a small dose. Now we'll look at a couple organizations that help with identification and managing high alert medications. So the first one is the Institute for Safe Medication Practices, or ISMP. Um, the Institute for Safe Medication Practices is an organization devoted to preventing medication errors and providing medication safety information. ISMP actually provides some high alert medication lists for specific pharmacy settings. They have one for the community and ambulatory care, which are like retail pharmacies, long-term care, which is like nursing homes, and acute care, which is hospitals. So they have individual lists identified for each of these settings that are considered high alert medications. And these specific lists can be found at ismp.org. Now we'll look at some of the high alert medication classes. And this collection I have here is composed from the ISMP resources. So some common high alert medication classes include insulins and sulfonylureas, anticoagulants, opioid pain medications, chemotherapy drugs, IV beta blockers, such as propranolol. Remember these beta blockers end with the suffix olol. Um, IV antiarrhythmics, immunosuppressant agents, intrathecal or epidural medications. These are medications that go into the spinal cord. Uh, medications contraindicated during pregnancy, neuromuscular blocking agents, pediatric liquid medications requiring measurement, radio contrast agents, moderate sedating agents, and this even includes minimally sedating agents when used in children, and anesthetic drugs. And the ones I have in bold here, we'll look a little more specifically at how or why these are high alert medications. So with the insulins, insulin and sulfonylureas, insulin is used to lower blood sugar and diabetes, and the sulfonylureas, they're an oral diabetes medication that also has a dramatic blood sugar lowering effect. So the reason these are high alert medications, um, they have a potent blood sugar lowering effect, and when given incorrectly in error, this can lead to coma and death. The opioids, these are pain medications, um, when used incorrectly, these can cause respiratory depression, which it means the person stops breathing, and this can lead to death. The anticoagulants, or blood thinners, they pose an increased risk of bleeding, and this can have serious adverse effects and even cause death. Um, chemotherapy drugs, these are drugs used for cancer treatment. They carry a high risk of toxicity just because they are like killing cells and they can kill good cells as well. So when used incorrectly, um, this can have serious adverse effects and even lead to death. And the neuromuscular blockers. These are medications that pre prevent movement, like during surgeries. Um, when used in error, these can cause paralysis or permanent injury and even death. 
So we looked at some of the drug classes. Now we'll look at some specific high alert medications, just some individual products. And remember, high alert medications have an increased risk of causing significant patient harm when used in error. So extra caution is needed with these, these drugs. So um, first there's epinephrine, um, epoprostenol, vasopressin, and sodium nitropresside. And I've kind of grouped these together. These medications can all have a potent effect on the blood pressure and heart rate. So that, that's something that's definitely extra caution is needed with. Um, oxytocin, given IV, and this is a hormone to induce labor or uterine contractions. There are some electrolytes, including injectable potassium, injectable sodium chloride that's greater than 0.9%, so this is greater than the normal saline, this is a hypertonic solution, and magnesium sulfate injection. Like I said, those are all electrolytes. Insulin U500. This is a more concentrated insulin compared to um, what's typically seen as the insulin U100. So you can see how that would have an effect with the blood sugar issues. Um, methotrexate, uh, this is a medication used um, in cancer treatment and also has other uses. So it's just something that needs caution. Um, promethazine injection, Phenergan, it can have lots of adverse effects. Um, when administered incorrectly. It's used for nausea. Um, opium, opium tincture, this is related to the pain medications, but it's used um, for patients um, sometimes like with, with diarrhea. Um, carbamazepine, lamotrigine, phen phenytoin, and valproic acid. These are all seizure medications, so that those need extra caution as well. So we looked at ISMP, that was one organization that deals with medication safety and has guidelines for the high alert medications. And now we'll look at the other organization called the Joint Commission. Um, the Joint Commission on Accredi Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations, it's known as JCO or it's abbreviated JC, is an organization that informs and evaluates healthcare facilities such as hospitals regarding safe and effective patient care. The standards used by the Joint Commission to accredit and certify healthcare organizations, those standards focus on patient safety and quality of care. And the Joint Commission requires organizations to identify and follow a process for managing high alert medications. So the Joint Commission has issued a bulletin listing high alert medications that have the highest risk of causing injury when misused. So the five high alert medications identified by the Joint Commission are insulin, opiates and narcotics, these are the pain medications, injectable potassium concentrates, this is an electrolyte, um, IV anticoagulants, uh, namely heparin, this is a blood thinner, and sodium chloride solutions above 0.9%, this is an electrolyte. So we've looked at some of these already about why those would be high alert medications, but we'll just kind of go through that again and look at the extra ones that the Joint Commission pointed out here that we hadn't talked about in detail. So with insulin, of course that's for diabetes to lower blood sugar. You know, it has a very potent blood sugar lowering effect. This can lead to coma, which can cause death when used inappropriately. Um, the opiates and narcotics, these are the pain medications. We've talked about that also. Um, these can cause respiratory depression, which causes a person to stop breathing and can lead to death. Um, the IV anticoagulants, which are blood thinners, have an increased risk of bleeding, and this can lead to serious adverse effects and death. And now we'll look at the electrolytes here, why they can cause, why they are considered high alert medications. So in the injectable potassium concentrates, they can lead to hyperkalemia, which means high potassium levels in the blood. Um, this can be problematic because it can increase the heart rate and change the heart rhythm, and this can cause death. And then the sodium chloride solutions above 0.9%, or this is greater than the normal saline, this is, would be hypertonic um, solutions, um, they can cause hypernatremia, which means high sodium levels in the blood. Um, when these levels get too high, this can cause brain damage, which can lead to death. So since we have all these high alert medications, um, what, what needs to be done are strategies to reduce the errors with the high alert medications. So here are some strategies. Um, educating staff about specific high alert medications, 
using high alert auxiliary labels such you know just a red label here like I show in the slide just says high alert drug just to identify these products um, limiting access to certain high alert medications independent double checks or IDCs for certain high alert medications and an independent double check that just means two people are separately checking for the accuracy of various aspects of the high alert medications so it could be you know the dose or the amount and then technology for automated double checks such as computer systems to confirm the correct drug correct dosage patient time and route of administration and now we'll just look at a summary and some key points to remember so high alert or high risk medications or HAMS have an increased risk of causing significant patient harm or injury when misused or used in error ISMP and JCO have resources for helping to identify and manage these high alert medications and some common high alert medications include insulin blood thinners concentrated electrolytes IV medications for seizures IV medications for heart rate and blood pressure and the high alert medications require extra precautions to reduce the risk of errors such as education and extra checks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to see more of my pharmacy learning videos. And if you would like to have lifetime ad free access to my pharmacy learning videos and handouts of all my slides, please consider enrolling in my online course today. The link is in the comments and description. Thank you.